For this problem, we are looking at cars speeding on the highway. Now, when we look at this, we need to make a sampling distribution for the proportion of cars that will be speeding when we sample 30 cars. Now, one important thing to note is that the more we sample, the tighter the distribution gets. This is because the standard deviation of the distribution will be P, which is 40%, times Q, which is 60%, P and Q add up to 1, so if P is 0.4, Q is 0.6, P times Q over N, which in this case is 30, and then we need to take this and square root it. P times Q over N square root. And for all intents and purposes, this might as well be 9%. So the standard deviation for my problem is 9%. Now we know that the center of the sampling distribution will be 40%. So using this right here, three standard deviations would be right about, whoops, I hit a wrong button. So let's do 0 0.09 times three, about 27%. And we see something very similar to this. Going right over here, this looks pretty close. Now if you look, we would need to zoom in right here. It doesn't go down exactly to 5%. If we subtract 27% from 40%, we get 13%. If we add it 27%, we would get right about 67%. And that's where that is at because this would be 70 and 75. So this works out nice and neat. This is our sampling distribution right here when sampling 30 cars. One thing to notice right here is we need to check our conditions and they label all the conditions for you. Randomization, 10% and success failure condition. Now with this in mind, one thing they mention is selecting the first 30 cars. So I believe the plan to set up a radar trap and check the speeds of the first 30 cars, yes. So no, this is not random at all. The randomization condition is not met. Very big, very important right there. Always make sure it says they're randomly selected. If it doesn't, then you can't say the randomization condition is met. Going on to this question right here, we're looking at, we know that 14% of all children are nearsighted. So we go to a kindergarten class where 175 students are in it, and we want to figure out the sampling distribution for the proportion of students who will be nearsighted. So with this in mind, are these children random? Is it success failure? Well, let's check the success failure condition. It would be that P, uh, PN and QN are each greater than 10. So let's take 0 0.14 times 0.175. That's greater than 10. And 0.86, which is Q, times 175. That is greater than 10 there's at least 10 expected successes and 10 expected failures. It seems to me that these are randomly selected. It doesn't say, and for the test, it should say that. But for this problem, it doesn't. I'm sorry, the problem's not perfect, but on the test, make sure it says they are randomly selected. That's how it would state it. Um, and the last condition, of course, the 10%. This is less than 10% of all children, all kindergarten children in the United States, so it passes that. So let's go right here. Now we need to make the sampling model. Same rules apply. 14% goes in the center, so it's down to C and D, and then we need to find out the standard deviation, which we take P times Q, there's P and Q, over N, which is 175, and then square root it. So it's about 2.5, when we times this by three, we get about point or eight percent. So we need to look for one. Let's go right here. We have eight percent going down right here and eight percent going up right there because this is 14. If you had eight percent of that, you get about 22 percent. That looks excellent. So when we do this right here, we need to use three standard deviations. Using three standard deviations, we can figure out that 6%, which is three standard deviations down, let's just do 6%, 0.06 times 175, 
is 10.5 children. So I'm guessing if we do 22%, we'll get about 38. 22% of 175 is about 38. Right here, three standard deviations above and below. Nice and good work. With this problem right here, we need to make the sampling distribution again. Remember, this is with proportions, and we're looking at the sampling distribution when we know the sample size, and we know the true proportion. We know the true proportions in these problems. This is P, not P hat. So if they believe that 9% of people will not make loan payments on times, let's say that the center of the sampling distribution, the mean of it, will be 0.09. That will be the mean of the sampling distribution. Going on further, we need to get the standard deviation again, P times Q over N square root. Remember it like that, P times Q right there, over N, which is 200, and then square root. So we get about 2%. So round to three decimals, so 0.02 for me. I can round just like that. So with this in mind, uh, looks like they're randomly selecting people. We can check the success failure condition. Let's go right here to check the success failure condition. We go to 0.09 times 200 and we get 18. And then the other one would be 182. This passes the success failure condition. Uh, we might assume they're randomized and this is less than 10% uh, of all loans. What is the probability that over 11% of people will not make a payment on time? Now here is where we have to go to the David M. Lane applet. And I can give it a good guess, but let's use the applet. So we're gonna go right over here and go to the applet. This is the David M. Lane normal applet. I'm gonna put in our model right here, 9% and 2%. <clears throat> With this in mind, we wanna see above 11%. So the probability of above 11% is 0.1587. Going back to our problem, let's input that answer. So it's round of three decimal places, 0.159 again. And so we're using what we did in chapter six. Let's go and look at this again. We're using what we did in chapter six to answer this problem. Remember, we're just going one standard deviation above, basically. And when we did this before, we used the 6895 99.7 rule, and we get about 16%. That may have worked for this problem. There's probably enough leeway that I would have gotten it correct, but it might not have worked. Use the applet, use your calculator if you know how with the normal CDF, but the applet will get you the right answer. A lot of people guess on this problem because it can be guessed, but I urge you to work on it and know how to do it because it will help for the test. So the national freshman to sophomore rate has held stay at 74%. A certain college has 496 of the 586 freshmen return as sophomores. Does this college have a right to brag? So let's go ahead and look at what their percentage is. 496 out of 583 is 85%. Now what we have to do is to say normally 74% would return. So if 74% would return, that means that our model is going to have 74% at the center because we know this about the population, about normally in all the United States, 74% of freshmen return as sophomores. Now what we also need, do you know what we also need to figure out this problem? We need a standard deviation. So we need to figure this out with P times Q over N square root. And for the time being, I'm gonna put in here above 85 because we wanna see about that probability because we wanna see how far away that was. But let's go and find the standard deviation. And we had, I need to see for the problem what N was. So here we go, P times Q. They're just, they add up to one over N and then we square root this. And the great thing about this is I can copy, paste it into here. And if you take a look, um, the possibility above 85% is zero. 
This is a very, very, very high rate. If you look at how many standard deviations it is above, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six, seven standard deviations, it's really far above. So yes, because their retention rate is more than six standard deviations, definitely room to brag right there. They are way away from everyone else. So this problem right here is one of my favorites. I think it's a good, tough problem because it throws at you P hat and P. So let's try to identify through this problem which one is P hat and which one is P. Remember that P is for the population, where P hat is for the sample. So when a truckload of apples arrives at a packing plant, a random sample of 125 is selected. That would be little m, and examined for bruises, discoloration, and other defects. The whole truckload will be rejected if more than 10% of the sample is unsatisfactory. And that would probably be p hat in this instance, because they're saying if we observe this in the sample, we will reject it. Suppose that in fact, 12% of the apples on the truck are bad. That is p, because that is the truth. Remember, p is the population proportion, the actual truth. So what we're looking at here is a model with 12% at the center. This right here is what we would expect to find. 12% would be bad. So let's go back to our normal applet and put that in the center. So now that we know the center, what do we need? We need a standard deviation. Going right here, and I think this problem is excellent for getting this down. P times Q over N, you're probably saying it with me this time too, square root. Make sure you pick the right number right there because 12 is the truth because we know 12% are bad that they say, oh, we know we've done research on this. 12% of our apples are bad. So if more than 10% of the apples are bad on this truck, it will be rejected. So we want to look at the probability of it being accepted. And if you look, this is where 10% is. We're most likely to land at 12%, but if for some reason, they inspect these apples and they get lucky and they don't find a bunch of bad ones. There is a 24.57% chance that this will be accepted. 24.57. Round to three decimal places. So it'll round up. Good job. Make sure to practice these problems. They can be a little tricky on which one is P and which one is P hat. Um, great problems. Good to get down and if you're in my class there's probably extra assignments you can do to make sure you understand these because when people get to the test they get a little bit confused on these problems good luck